most of the things that I've always felt are breakthroughs are maybe like a like an iceberg. Uh, you only see the tip of it. The 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 culmination of something happens then, and there's an awful lot of foundation work that occurred before that that really in some ways would be the breakthrough. When I was at Stanford, uh, I was recording musical groups with a tape recorder that I had built in high school. And the tape recorder was three tracks, a big monster. Uh, this is a picture of it so you have an idea of uh, what we're talking here. And uh, this machine I had in uh, a science fair. Um, Walt Seltstead saw it and said, wait a minute, this kid is doing the same thing we are. Uh, this is when three channels was just getting started. Tape with this quarter inch, so three channels on quarter inch tape. I built the heads for that. And, uh, and it, worked, it worked okay. It was, it was based, uh, the mechanics were based on a silver tone, Sears Roebuck silver tone, which was essentially a Pentron recorder. Those were affordable for kids like myself. And uh, the heads were built out of hearing aid transformers. I took the laminations apart and essentially uh, made a gap with windings on them and stuck them back together again and, and kind of looked at the gaps and lined them up visually and as long as the machine ran fairly fast it worked pretty good. That machine actually had um, something like six speeds if I remember right ranging from 30 IPS down to uh, I think one and seven eighths and uh, it's just that the nature of the uh, mechanical drive it could do that had fan motors on the reels and uh, no logic, all mechanical things. You had to be fast with your hands to run it, otherwise the tape would spill all over the place. But in any case, the basic thing was that I built this thing, I liked music, and I built the machine, and Cell said, saw it and said, hey, you've got to, we'll, we'll set you up as a student engineer, and that would be probably sufficient to, get, to go to any school you want at that point. And so, so off I went to Stanford, started recording things and realized that the, this obviously this big boat anchor is too, too much of a machinery to haul around any place and semiconductors were just getting started. The early CK722 Raytheon things which are really uh, uh, kind of a fallout from military parts were becoming available. All that was very primitive and nevertheless I did attempt to make something very small using those parts and uh, that got some notoriety too. And this is my version of a Walkman. There it is. <laughs> and uh, so this was around the Stanford times. It, it didn't work very well. It, uh, it ate up batteries at a good clip and uh, the signal noise ratio was almost non-existent but it made a recording and so all during this time I was recording and it ultimately built a a uh, machine during that time that I could carry around and uh, that machine went through several iterations of electronics as I got to learn a little bit more of how these things worked and the machine kind of looks like like this guy which uh, this picture shows Hal Powell of uh, of clavier using it in a recording session and the picture was made probably uh, around the time that I was just finishing Stanford uh, and that's how the machine looked at that time. I was taking that machine and making recordings in various places and a fellow by the name of Tam Henderson saw the setup and said this is kind of neat, it's very small, it does an awfully good job. He didn't know how it worked but, but he recognized right away that it had very low modulation noise and the time, bain, time domain response was a whole lot better than uh, conventional machines were. And so he wanted to learn more about it and I invited them over to my place and we went through many tapes and we found he found all kinds of things and said, this is neat let's just make an LP of all this stuff give it a title and see what happens and so we we did that created a stir right away and uh, that made almost instant success uh, it, w it was called the uh, Professor Johnson Astounding Sound Show made that release and that made for audiophile circuits made it big time. That was it was one of the better selling records in that genre.